Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Harish Manadia. I'm from Shipping and Freight Resource. It's a online resource for uh, shipping and freight knowledge, information, and also marketing solutions for the freight industry. Today, I'm here to talk about uh, shipper-owned containers and uh, a, a, a brief about what it is, what it entails, who can use it, when you will, when you will be using it and certain other items that are uh, required for the handling of uh, shipper-owned containers. SOC is the, is the most common abbreviation that is used for shipper-owned containers, and uh, that uh, obviously stands for shipper-owned containers. Now, many people might ask, why would a shipper own containers? Um, generally, in container business, the containers are owned by the shipping lines, uh, also known as carriers. Now, carriers were, uh, in, in today's uh, climate, there's close to 24 million TEUs uh, circulating around the world across various trade lanes. And majority of that is owned by the shipping lines who operate these in various trade lanes as they, as they circle around the globe. <clears throat> but so, so when the carrier is owning and operating the container, it is called a carrier-owned container. But when it is owned by a shipper, it is called a shipper-owned container. Now, the term shipper could have various meanings because, for example, for a shipping line, a, a BCO or a beneficial cargo owner like, like a John Deere or a Cisco could be a shipper. And, but to these same carriers, uh, freight forwarders or NVOCC operators can also be shippers because for them it doesn't matter who's shipping the cargo and uh, so so in cc operators and freight forwarders also sometimes own containers and sometimes also the shippers so that is why it is called shippers own container now some of the terminologies that you might come across in in handling uh, shipper owned containers are uh, soc as as i mentioned and also the carriers sometimes require the the owner of the container to provide certification, ACEP certification, which, which is a uh, certification that is required for the uh, continuous uh, inspection of the container. ACEP stands for Approved Continuous Examination Program, which means the container has to be certified at certain, at uh, regular intervals, must be examined, must be inspected, must be fit for, uh, uh, for, for the sea transport. It must be seaworthy in, in all respects. And uh, so the shipping line, if you if you are a shipper and if you want to ship your own container with a shipping line, they will ask you to provide this ACEP certificate and also the CSC plate, which is the uh, container safety certificate, uh, sorry, container safety convention certificate but that must be on the container and it must be valid at all times. So the, these are two important factors that the that the shipping lines will look for when when they are accepting a shipper owned container now shipper owned containers can be used at various stages but a lot of the shippers use shipper owned containers because uh, in in for for shipments like a project cargo so for example if if uh, if somebody if some country is building a power project in a remote area within the country and they want to bring in goods. Each time they bring in goods in a container, they might not be able to unpack the container at the same time and use all the cargo. And in, in that sense, they cannot keep the container with them because it will incur demerit in detention, which is one of the most expensive charges for a, uh, for a shipper levied by the container, line, a container shipping line. Container shipping lines charge demerit in detention because like any movable asset, the container generates revenue only if it is continuously moving. If it is not moving and it is stagnant in some place, it's just not generating enough revenue for them. And uh, even for a container shipping line, not all containers are owned by them. They also lease containers from other people. So they may be paying uh, rent on that. They may be paying higher for that or they may be paying interest on the, uh, on, on the container purchases. So they need to recoup that cost, and that is why they charge them in detention. 
So for example, if there's a project happening in Central Asia, for example, and uh, a lot of containers are required, 150, 200 containers worth of cargo. And for, these, for this many containers to go there and sit for months on end and waiting for it to be unpacked, it will be very expensive for the, for the customer. Therefore, customers, the, the project customers like ABB or Siemens or any of those uh, multinationals, they buy containers. They prefer to buy containers uh, for their own use. And after the container, uh, after the purpose of the container has been served, they, they then sell those containers in the market or they can scrap it. So those are some real life examples where, where Shipron containers uh, may be used. And in terms of other uses also, in, uh, there, are, there are some drawbacks as well because a container is not cheap. A, a 20 foot container can cost uh, even $2,000, $2,500 and a 40 foot container can, can cost up to $4,500. So that is, that is quite an investment for a shipper if he wants to buy a container and not just buy a container, he, he has to maintain the container, he has to uh, make sure that the container is, uh, is safe and secure to use at all times. And sometimes when the container goes to a foreign destination and it doesn't come back in time, he does not have any uh, other container to use. And he doesn't have the use of the container that he's already purchased. So those are some drawbacks that, that uh, shipper-owned containers, can, shippers can face if they're using shipper-owned container. But at the same time, if you are a NVOCC, um, like, like Coronado, for example, or, or, uh, or an Expeditors, or now recently Amazon. So they, it makes sense for these kind of uh, multinational companies to buy containers and use them because they, they can keep it circulating. They can keep it moving from whichever parts of the world it is sent to. So, so for, that, uh, for those kind of customers, shipper on container is a, is a, is a good option. And in terms of extra processes for using shipper owned containers, yes, there will be some extra processes as I mentioned, because the shipping line has to be, has to be convinced that the containers that are used are cargo worthy and sea worthy, and all the fittings on the container are strong enough to, be, to withstand the multiple handling that might happen. So they need to make sure that these, that these containers that, that, that are used are in good condition. So for, for, for that, they might be, they might uh, also ask for inspection certificates. They might ask for additional uh, documents to prove ownership of the containers. And also shipper owned containers, the, the markings on the shipper owned container must also be changed because sometimes shippers buy containers from third party people or maybe some of the old containers from shipping lines. So for example, if you buy a, container from MSC, the container might read, container number might read MSCU, which is the prefix that is used by MSC. But if you are buying it as a shipper for your own use, you have to change the ownership prefix of that container because you cannot use it as an MSCU because it does not belong to MSCU. And remember the container prefix is so those for uh, shipper on containers. And some people have asked how how does one source shipper on containers? Well, there are many, many ways to source uh, uh, source containers. You can buy it from directly from manufacturers, but obviously they, they are used to selling in bigger lots to shipping lines mainly, and not to, uh, not to customers who want one or two containers. Then there are the, as I just mentioned, there are the uh, second-hand container uh, dealers who buy containers from, from shipping lines or from leasing companies, and they refurbish those containers and recondition and sell it almost like brand new to other customers so you can source this like that. Then there are also, you can you, you could uh, lease containers for a period of time from, from uh, 
leasing companies and make it your own for that period and use that as shipper owned containers. Uh, but there are also other options like uh, container exchange, for example, who, uh, who have the flexibility, who offer the flexibility uh, to the customers to either buy or lease or sell containers through their online platform. And that is also a very good way to, to identify containers, the availability of containers, where it is, and then choose from those, uh, from those areas to, to either buy or sell. So several uh, options for, for customers to, to source SOCs. And there are also um, big differences in the markings of the container. So um, the, the, as, as I mentioned earlier, some of the markings will definitely change on the container number, the ownership, the name of the owner of the container, the prefix, container prefix, the check digit, uh, the CRC approval, all of that will change in an SOC container. 